Right. So as a habit, I'm trying to make from all my coaching sessions. I want my student to talk first and tell me his thoughts about this particular matchup, which we're going to review right now. What do you think went wrong here? I think I focused too much on the mid to late game. And then by the time the early game had finished, uh, we were getting rolled. So I think I focused too much on controlling the lane and not enough about helping the side lanes. But in general, I, I don't really know when it's good to just stay in mid, focus on getting the mid tower, or when it's worth trying to like TP to side lanes and save teammates. Yeah, all right. It's a good topic because, I mean, we can both conclude that a Necro as a mid lane hero is played completely differently than someone like a Storm. They have completely different playstyles, different skill sets. So, like for Storm, if, if your goals would be to like get level six and make maybe make place in the middle, maybe make place on the sides. That would make complete sense. But as a necro, it's a different skill set. You gotta set up different goals. What would you say your goals were for necro in the transitioning from from the laning phase to early game and to mid game? I think part of my issue is I didn't have a good enough plan. To be honest, I just my goal was just get farm get Radiance at some point, get tanky and, and do some damage in team fights. I didn't really have enough of a plan around power spikes. Huh. Uh, we gotta deviate a little from, from uh, the usual path for these, this replay analysis. I gotta just ask, did you think that Radiance makes Necro tanky? No, 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 no definitely not. <laughs> Um, okay. My 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 thinking was I'd I'd grab the radiance, then get tanky, and by the time I had radiance up, we could maybe get a few pickoffs, and then after a few pickoffs, I could get either like a piper or shivers or something, and then right. I can like start. Um, right, 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 right. It's actually this will make a good a big part of this topic. Did you actually go radiance this game? Yes. All right, I think it's going to be a, a really <laughs> huge part why did you why you lost okay. this game. Interesting. Uh, do yeah, you have I'm... any do you have any idea why would I say that? Uh, thinking back, would you <clears throat> would you agree that Rus Russian radiance is a big no no? Uh, I mean, yeah. To be honest, I'm 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 yeah, pretty low MMR, and I'm not my one of my worst parts of gameplay is itemizing. So I rely too much often on just like the random dirt plus suggestions. I think in retrospect, going for that radiance meant I didn't have nearly enough survivability against like the Nyx, Invoker, um, Chrono. I mean, just their whole team, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my job isn't just only to tell you that radiance is bad. My job mm -hmm. will be to let you let, um, how do I say this, to put you on a correct path of thoughts mm -hmm. so you yourself can decide whether an item is good or not and mm -hmm. this will this will in the future translate to you making conscious decisions in the game and deciding yourself whether you should go for example radiance or not mm -hmm. that makes sense it's interesting to hear that you uh, before the games even started has basically discounted radiance as a, a viable first item it's 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 awful. It's awful item for 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 Necrophobe. It's, it's it's actually an awful item in general. Very few heroes benefit from it. But I mean that's that's a kind of a different topic. Let's yeah, let's get back okay. on track and focus mm -hmm. on this. Okay, what? Um, I, once again, I, I got I want to get into your mind. What were your thoughts? What would you say your game plan was for the? Let's say until level six. How how did you plan to approach this lane against Invoker? Yeah, initially, uh, I just wanted to buy, because uh, I, because at this point I had the radiance in my mind, whether that's a good idea or not. Um, my thinking was that I would focus on lane sustain and um, control, really. So I went for a couple of no talismans and just shipped out regen whenever I needed. I just wanted to, yeah, shut off the invoker from farm if I could. Uh, did you think? you as a necro 
actually can shut in walker down from farming. Yes, I did. Although you, you asking that question makes me think, um, maybe I can't because the invoker's always gonna, you know, it's gonna outlast at me anyway. I mean, it's way, way more nuanced than that. But, but again, I want to put this thought process in your mind that as you go to the lane, you, you should weigh, weigh your options realistically. What can you do or can't you do? And in this particular matchup against Invoker, he is the hero that can very easily disengage from your efforts just by slightly changing skill set and, and go going for a couple more points and quas. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess in that case, maybe my focus should have been around. Yeah. I'm not sure. Side lanes, I don't know. I'm not sure. Right. Um, it's, it's not actually a big deal to not have a concrete game plan. Mm -hmm. Because, actually, uh, I'm, I'm just going to say the opposite. The best idea for the game plan is exactly to have no idea for the game plan and to be flexible and simply adapt to the current situation. So, for example, yeah. before this game even begins, a uh, theoretical scenario. Let's assume I am Necro and I'm against Invoker. If this first lane, let's say I block good, I block good, I collect all the last hits because I have blocked good. Now I'm level 2, Invoker is level 1. He summons a Forge Spirit, I kill the Forge Spirit, that's an extra gold, XP advantage. In that case, my game plan changes from something like being passive and reacting to taking control of this lane because I now have the XP advantage and farm advantage. So I, was, I would be dynamic, I would see how the first lane goes. If the first lane goes, to my advantage, then I will continue to pursue that advantage. If my block was bad, if the invoker managed to get a few last hits in, and he reaches level 6 before me, level, level 2, sorry, and now he has Ford Spirit, which you cannot reliably kill. Uh, well, basically, yeah. It's a big trail of thoughts, and what I'm trying to say is for the next, like, 10, maybe 100 matches, your mindset should be to go into the lane with a flexible mindset and try to simply adapt to the current situation. So this, this tracks back to my previous point. Instead of thinking, hmm, I will build Radiance this game, you should be thinking, hmm, I will see what is the current game status at level 6 and then I will decide what is the best item next. Yeah. Yeah, Did all of that make sense? Hundred percent. And I think, um, yeah, the more that I try and do that, and the more I, I practice uh, on sort of dynamic itemization, hopefully it'll get easier, or I'll get better at it. Yeah, I mean, uh, a huge part of uh, high MMR games is decided by the correct itemization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I think that's enough talk. Let's see how the actual laning is happening. You're like the fifth student in a row that <laughs> goes to the mid lane with the ward and does not place it. Um, and, every, and every single yeah. time I, I give shit for them. I mean, just as soon as the game starts, just walk in, place your ward somewhere you can see the rune. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, worst case scenario, you still have vision. Best case scenario, you can actually see, catch a glimpse of the enemy mid laner placing his rune. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no reason not, not to make. Uh, that you make establishing proper vision your first objective. Okay. I'm I'm not sure what is it with you guys the, treating this war like a sacred treasure which should never be used. It's because or... yeah, I think I want to save it up so I can you know the vision can last a little bit longer. But obviously that's a uh, flawed way of thinking. Yeah, you answered it yourself.
Okay, a little bit of skirmish there. Yeah, nothing too back. exciting. Okay, blocking, that's good. Yeah, see, now you have a ward in your inventory, which probably tells the side lanes that someone might not have a ward. Or maybe that the mid lane has two wards. I mean, this, this, these are both possible situations. And yeah. what I'm saying with this is that enemy now has good information to work with, just because you have this ward in your inventory. I hadn't even thought about that, but that is, that's a really great point. Okay, and here comes my first <laughs> pull point out. Can you guess what it is? Um, I, sh I shouldn't have taken that hit. No, 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 before that. Okay. Uh, bad block. Tango. I'm not sure. Yeah, you are on the right track with the block. As soon as you can confirm that the creeps will not meet in the favorable position, which is your high ground. Your first order of business should be to try to fix the equilibrium by right-clicking the enemy mid-hero and dragging some creeps back. This is always the first order of business, always. In, in 1k, in 5k, in 6k, in 10k. Each yeah. mid laner will attempt to shift the creep equilibrium to their favor. I do, yeah, I do often try to do this. I'm not quite sure why I didn't hear, potentially because I just got that last hit and wanted to grab a Tango before doing so, but... Yeah, Tango yeah. would be my, my second point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if you're not in immediate danger of dying, you should never um, mm -hmm. alter the... your lane movements like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially yeah. as a Necro who has a emergency healing service mm -hmm. at his disposal like you still have tango yeah, they're, they're not in danger of expiring if the, it would be share tango even if it would be share tango they would still be not yet no danger of expiring until the uh, first wave has passed so first order of business fix the creep equilibrium second order of business as soon as the first wave is concluded uh, that means either your creeps are going to invoker Invoker creeps are going to you, and then you will have a natural free moment to use the tango. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I made a lot of bad mistakes in this game, so I was almost tempted not to not to want to do this because I was embarrassed. But uh, I figure it's probably a, a better one to get feedback on than one where I'm playing slightly better. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're gonna catch a lot of stuff. I mean, some mm -hmm. of the stuff I can see that you already know. You can already tell that the blocking was not ideal. You can tell that you forgot to uh, take the creeps. And yeah, I, I can see that you kind of see about the tango thingy. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what else will you rec recognize yourself as you're looking back to this moment. Especially since it is so fresh in your mind. Yeah. Okay, second point coming right up. Which creep is the most important in the mid lane? Or any the lane? They're ranged. Right. Yeah, so in your mind, you should try to make every possible move to make sure that it is secured. How, as a necro, how best can you do that? Uh, run up to it and secure it with my Q. Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> so, uh, do, do you know by heart how much damage does it do? Your, your More or less. At, at level one. Yeah, yeah. I knew it's it's just over a right click, pretty much. Yeah, it's double your right click, actually. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So, the best uh, course of action to secure the range creep is to hit the range creep a couple of times. Uh, bring the range keep to about 150 health then you press Q and as the projectile is flying you deal yeah, the that. final right click and there is you... literally zero chance that invoker can deny it yeah that's a great point do you actually um, if you're playing game would you actually look at like the exact creep health 
when you're trying to last hit and use uh, that? I think uh, as players can experience, they will sort of get a feeling mm -hmm. for it. I know yeah. I have a sort of feeling for it playing Storm, playing Necro. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I, I know pretty much by looking at the health bar how much it, it has. Mm -hmm. I can gauge uh, by the number of creeps hitting it, how soon the health is going to fall down. And that helps mm -hmm. me calculate how soon should I react for a securing movement. Mm -hmm. And you see right now, Invoker can easily deny it. Yeah, luckily he's not the best invoker, so yep. I think I get away with it. <laughs> yep. Uh, another point that I'm gonna quickly mention, it's mm -hmm. not very, very crucial, but I mean, it's just little pieces of efficiency, which is good for Necro, even better for Storm, if you, if you want to play Storm someday. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the situation is that Invoker can still pretty easily deny the current melee creep. He yeah. has higher, higher damage, higher everything. So, very simple trick. I'm sure you know of it. Just walk back a bit, right click the Voker, and the creep follows you. Now, Invoker cannot realistically follow you to deny the creep because he has to deal with those two belly creeps of yours being hit by his tower. And he, he cannot realistically focus on two things at once. So, what will happen is that you will be completely free to time the last hit with your own right click and save some mana and bottom point is saving mana is always the best thing ever yeah which is pretty much what happened naturally <laughs> but, but you can uh, <laughs> often force it yourself make it happen yeah all good all good Another thing I would like you to practice more is not only physical domination in the lane, but also mental domination in the lane. Like, uh, wait a second, wait a second, wait, wait, wait for it, 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 and here we go. The creeps have met. What would happen if you would just walk into Invoker's high ground and plant yourself there? What, what, what would you? How would you think he would react? Uh, attack me. Most likely. Maybe he'd run away. But... Right. If he attacks you, what happens? All, all of your creeps switch to him, and now you have creep advantage because you're Necro, you have heals. Mm -hmm. If that happens, he's at a disadvantage. He Either he attacks you and he takes more damage, or he falls back, and you have way more freedom with the last hits. Either way I see it, it's a win-win situation. Yeah. As no, a Necro... No, stronger in this situation yeah as an echo will very often be the stronger person especially at level mm -hmm. one because just because of their built-in queue so i would like you to remember this fact and try to abuse it a little bit more mm -hmm. in your future matchups yeah like right now what i have seen is you i think you kind of just run away to your high ground for no apparent reason yeah 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 you just did a little this little walk just a little dance. Yeah. yeah. In effect, the dance. Yeah, I can see you kind of want to do stuff, but you're not too sure about it. Yeah. So it comes out awkwardly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's good that you, you're playing Necro here because Necro has way more forgiveness when he tries to be aggressive. Yeah. Which would help you to learn it. I also kind of liked how you queued everyone, especially the the the, the fourth spirit. And I'm, I'm just gonna make a little note here. If when Invoker summons the fourth spirit, if you attack it like three or four times, and then queue, same with the range creep. He will simply have no choice but to either to feed the fourth spirit, which is good for you, or send it back. Which is essentially just wasted spell. Again, either way, win-win. Yeah, it's a good shout. I need to... Yeah, I don't really even think about uh, killing the Forge Spirit enough when I'm playing Invoker. Yeah, it's just free, free everything. Mm -hmm. Right, so you could pull the creeps here a bit again. 
This should this should be on your mind a lot more. Pulling the creeps back. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing here. I just go completely cut out. Of range. Yeah, you just step into the tower. <laughs> I don't think I need to comment here. It's it's pretty yeah. obvious. You know, it was a mistake. And, and Walker kind of does the same. He just chases you with no real purpose. Yeah. And then falls back. What are you going? Where are you going? No. I mean, that was yeah, some wasted time. Should have known he was definitely getting there before me. Yeah, in in these situations where you know that the enemy is gonna be away from the lane for for a couple of seconds, you, your goal should be to just clear those creeps ASAP. Yeah. So what will happen is while the enemy hero is away from the lane, your creeps will go straight to the tower, so which is which is all. Yeah, yeah. I was what? about to say, even a situation like this, where it's early on, I don't have much health or mana, is it still good to shove the lane, knowing that I can't go jungle? You, you don't want to go jungle. No, that, that, that was not the, the point <laughs> I was making. You send those creeps to his tower, so that he, by the time he returns, he would have missed at least two creeps, mm -hmm. and then he has to fight for the, for the rest of yeah. them, for, for the last hits with the tower. Mm -hmm. Which 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 a chance which essentially makes sure that he cannot realistically and efficiently harass you. While mm -hmm. you you're still gaining health back via tango, you have another one. And well ideally at this point you should have a battle as well. I'm not sure if you're building battle or necro, but you should. So uh yeah, again the point is to if you see enemy leave the lane, you know it's not gonna be in the lane for the next 10-15 seconds. Just go to town on those creeps. Send them to his tower. It's once again a win-win situation for you. I um yeah I I was building bottle on necro for a while and then just figured it was kind of a waste of money if I could rely on my E. I don't know. I'm guessing it's still good. Would you build it on every mid hero? This patch, the bottle yeah is best on everyone. Even TAs are building bottles sometimes. Mm -hmm. Additionally, if you would have sent those creeps to his tower, you would also be free to visit this rune and take it for yourself. Yeah, that small, small walk actually had a huge impact. Um... Yeah, we're, we're only two minutes in, but I think we have counted like uh, six instances of efficiency of things yeah. we could have done better. Yeah. And those add up fast. Okay, let's make a 7. You're trying to hit the range creep, but you're standing on the low ground. Yeah. Did I actually get a miss as well? Oh yeah, well. It doesn't matter if you get a miss or not. Yeah. It, what matters <laughs> is that there's a chance that you will mm -hmm. get a miss, and there's nothing preventing you from stepping, stepping one pixel <laughs> up to the <laughs> high ground to not yeah. even get those chances. Yeah. Yeah. I would also like you to save your Q mm -hmm. for moments where you actually need them. I mean, I, I don't think anyone threatened this range creep for you. Yeah, that's true. And if you felt that it was threatened, then just take one more second to go to Invoker so that you can hit him as well with the Q. Yeah. Okay, so now we have sent our entire wave into his tower. But in the meanwhile, he got both runes, and he's he's losing nothing right now. Yeah. And then and, and the way I described the situation previously, he would have lost quite a lot and would have given up the rune as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's, so it's yeah, good. it's it's those moments you would need to recognize and make those decisions. I don't expect you to become a master of those moments, but uh, as long as it's in your head, as long as you think, hmm, maybe I could do this or that, as long as you have those possibilities and you recognize some of them, some of them will lead to MMR gains. Yeah. Or just skill gains, which should hopefully in turn lead to MMR yeah. gains. <laughs> I mean, right now, even with the, all the things we have pointed out, you're, you're still ahead of this invoker. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more thing. 
uh, specifically for Necro vs. Volker match. Take the point in W as early as level 3, uh, 4, as early as level 4. You don't benefit much from uh, Heartstopper's aura that much. But think, yeah. pressing Ghost Route as soon as he tries to combo you with a Cold Snap just completely shuts down his combo. Mm -hmm. he, cannot, he cannot do nothing to you. Yeah, I think if I was wasting less mana, I wouldn't need the Heartstopper. So yeah, that, that as well. But yeah, the kind of point I'm making right here is that um, you still have the advantage from, from levels 1 to 3 because of your Q, but as Invoker grows in power, he will have quite some powerful spells, some combos with the Cold Snap, but as soon as, it, as, soon as you hit level 4, the Ghost Shroud completely negates his combos. So essentially the lane became, becomes a draw, because while you cannot kill him because of the Q, he still cannot kill you. Yeah. So you are free farming because you have wave clear capabilities and he is almost free farming. He does not have wave clear capabilities. He will he will have to compete for the last hits with the tower, which makes it less efficient mm -hmm. than if he was a necro. If you if you would have noticed in this matchup, not once have the creeps met under your tower. That's yeah. because you as a necro you naturally push under his tower. Every single wave has ended up under his tower, and that naturally made him miss a lot. So while you may not have realized that, by simply doing necro things, you have the advantage <laughs> and he does not. Yeah, yeah. necro is annoying like that. But the enemy team at least. Yeah, I mean we would have entirely different discussion if this was a but... storm game. Yeah, so... And I, I definitely do want to learn Storm. I think he's with my, fits him in my play style. I quite like playing Timber. I think they're semi similar. Um, I met, I misplay here hugely, and I think yeah. Okay, <laughs> my, my, my first, just... uh, my first thing would be to say something about the board. Well, but yeah, that that, that death was as well the, the combination <clears throat> and having Ghost Shroud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, that ward I kind of liked. I don't know. I saw it in a, in a pro game I was watching, and I figured it was nice to get some vision behind the tower. But I'm not. I'm not saying it's a bad war. What I'm saying is the way you placed it was completely reckless. Yeah, yeah. If if it's any enemy, obvious. if any enemy support would be watching your movements, which mm -hmm. at higher MMR would absolutely happen because you're. You're diving somewhere you could be very easily killed. They would spot you placing this ward immediately, and that's just free gold for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When you place wards, you gotta do it a little bit more sneakily. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's a good ward. It's a really good ward, but the way you placed it, it just asks yeah, yeah. to be the ward at the next minute. Yeah. Okay, level 6, no ultimate. I, yeah, I mean, that was just a misclick, and that was another reason I didn't want to share this replay, is because I missed the only Necro game where I've not leveled my armor at level 6, and oh. I just okay. hit the wrong key. I kind of thought you would say that your reasoning was that you cannot kill Invoker, which would be a really good reasoning, uh, and okay. to which I would answer that you could actually ask for Disruptor's Rotation, Mm -hmm. In which case you could absolutely kill the invoker, but if it's a misclick and you did intend to kill the invoker, then I'm just gonna say that you cannot kill the invoker unless okay. the interceptor comes along. And that's just because he's level seven and is gonna have way too much escape. But no, if he, if he would be level four or five, you still couldn't kill him okay. because he would simply not have enough damage to bring him low enough mm -hmm. with his yeah. Q. If if he was any smarter, he would even bring a cell for emergencies. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, sometimes you will be able to kill the mid laner, get, get away with getting him low because they might be reckless, but I think even at lower MMRs, they recognize that Necro is 6 and they shouldn't be low in the yeah. first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If, 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 if you manage to bring them low and they're still level 5, then you could catch them by surprise by getting a sneaky level 6 mid creep wave. I mean, I, I've done it, I've had it quite a lot of times in, in, in 6k games of mine. Where the enemy mid laner just did not pay enough attention and then got 
killed because he no. stayed low. So, yeah, I suppose. I suppose you could start wearing them down earlier. Yeah, no, it's just a misclick from me. But uh, do you think I'm doing the right thing by just staying mid? I'm not being very efficient in mid, but do you think generally that's the right thing I, I should be doing? This is the only thing you can do as Necro. And mm -hmm. even if you're not being efficient, uh, just just think about it for a second. Look what's happening. Every single wave, same thing. The, your creeps are pushing his tower. The tower is taking damage. Look at the difference. Nothing. 33%. Even if you don't think it's efficient, even if you might not understand the efficiency, it's still happening as Necro, because that's that's what Necro does. You essentially, you plant the enemy mid laner in your lane. The enemy mid laner cannot make rotations because the tower will fall. Yeah. So, yeah, even if you think nothing is happening, so much is happening behind the scenes. Yeah. The invoker, he has to farm these small camps. He cannot leave. Because mm -hmm. the tower will take too much damage. He has to stand here to protect it. And any rotation you make, because Invoker has to tank your Q, has to tank the creeps, he might eventually get low enough that plus one disruptor, uh, grip stroke. You 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 two, you three could get a easily get a kill with the Reaper sides. So yeah. As a necro, ganking side lanes is never an option. Okay. Right. But just by still playing in the mid lane, you're making so much space without even realizing it. Ooh. Right now we're making so much space. Just by just by sitting here in the middle. <laughs> and it's beautiful. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no. Yeah. I I mean I thought maybe he could just kill me there, but he could, yeah, he absolutely would have because you have no ghost shroud. Yeah. And then you leave for jungle. Uh yeah, you shouldn't leave for jungle until you have secured the imminent creep wave. Even if so that my thought my mind where there was like I need a neutral. I'm guessing it's still just always worth killing the wave. First. Uh, usually, usually, usually. With the Ghost Shroud, you could just mm -hmm. play extremely aggressive and never leave yeah. this lane. But yeah, I suppose because you just randomly lost half of your health, you are at risk of dying. Mm -hmm. But even so, I wouldn't go jungle. I would wait at my high ground. Mm -hmm. And what, what I would advise you to do, what I would do myself, is just collect those creeps and drag them all the way to the small camp. So now you have Unbreath. these creeps mm -hmm. and, and a small camp, and nothing is ever lost. Yeah. Yeah. And you would even have time for the rune, which you gave away. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's surprising, really, when, when you talk about it like that, how much of a difference. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so while this is happening, I suppose you're hitting the tower. Yes, you are. Good, good. Was this your fortification? Yes, no, I didn't hear that. Uh, yes. Yeah, I was just cool. glad I thought I could finish the... I almost was able to, but... Okay, so, a uh, little point in efficiency. Mm -hmm. While you're hitting this tower, and no one is... Uh, no one is really stopping you from hitting this tower. With each single hit, you should move a little bit to meet the creep wave. So that way you, you, you can start cubing the creep wave, so it never arrives to the tower, it uh, dies before it reaches, because you would have double cubed it, and your creeps would again beat at the tower and finish it freely. I mean, what you have done is still okay, but we have more efficient ways to do it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I mean, if I'd have done everything you pointed out, in a more efficient way, I'd I'd be in a much better spot right now, most likely. I'm gonna say you're still in a really, really, really good spot. Like I, what I pointed out would put you at um, I don't know, let's say ninety percent 
of efficiency you could reach in this game out of 100 but the way you play this play the displayed out you're still at like a 75 percent efficiency out of 100 which still is, is quite a lot the tower is gone your tower is untouched untouched you died only once which is worse than zero but still only once and walker did not actually make any plays in the off lane or anywhere this is a really good uh really good outcome Look at the mm. network scale. You're the first. Oh, side lane's lost. Okay. Uh, yeah, Walker. The side lane's in <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Walker is uh, kind of okay. Could be better, could be worse. Mm -hmm. But your job, exactly this. You're supposed to prevent the off as an acro, as an acro. You're supposed to prevent the off laner from rotating. Mm -hmm. No, not, not mid lane or not off laner, my bad. And take the tail, which is exactly what happened. So, yeah. Even if you might not feel like it, you still did your job. It's not the very the most efficient job, but the job was done. And now that we have concluded the laning phase, now you ask, is it the radiance I want or something else? Um, looking back on this game, if I were to choose again, I think I would have um definitely gone. Well, I don't know. At this time, I didn't know how aggressive they were going to be. So I thought I could you know, get away with the Radiance. In retrospect, they weren't doing much physical damage to me, so I, I didn't think it was worth... Uh, they weren't doing much magical damage to me, so I didn't think it was worth getting a hood. Uh, maybe it was, just for the small amount of magic damage they were doing. Um, but I guess I could have gone for like a Lotus or a Shiva. Shivas? Right, okay, let's take this moment right now to examine why is Radiance complete other shit. <laughs> so, would you say that Faceless Void likes to build PKB? Yes. Would you say that Slardar likes to build PKB? Yes. <laughs> Does anyone else in their team <clears throat> like to be in melee range of you? No. What is the Radiance for, then? Yeah, that's a good point. Exactly. That's a very good point. Not only in this game, in many games, there's simply not enough targets to make a Radiance worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if there were targets, the way the Radiance is being built is that you are not getting any power spikes for like 10 minutes. That's a long time, yeah. While you're accumulating this 5-6k gold item. While you could, you could be getting a hood, a pipe, a mech, all of these, mm -hmm. they create small power spikes that allow your team to either take towers, take Roche, or just secure more space. Radiance, while you build it, just nothing is happening at all. It's wasted time, wasted space. And once you build it, okay, in some games against, I suppose, Lancer, it could be, it could be good. But again, your team is losing space while they're building it. And in games like this, uh, what, what is it for? Right, it does know. nothing. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So would you just pretty much never build it on a Necro mid? Because I saw some dope buff guides. I was trying to like, you know, have a look at what. Uh, I do. I, I do never build it. Okay. Necro is my me. second most played hero after Storm. Not sure if you nice. knew this. I did not, but that is good to hear. Yeah, every time Storm is banned, I play Necro. <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, during the this last year, I, I think I have accumulated like a lot of um, two hundred games or something, and not once nice. have I built Radiance. Okay, cool. And what would you have gone here then? I'm guessing you'd have just gone standard hood into pipe. Right. So my favorite early game items would be hood, blade mail, and blink. Do you know why? Because they are universal. They will yeah. do the job in any kind of lineup. You will always find uses for them. Mm. So even in games where you are unsure what you build, one of those three will always serve a purpose. In this game against Invoker, uh, I actually don't know which one is best. Mm -hmm. So I would probably take Blade Mail. Because I know it will ruin Invoker's combo. He would just kill mm -hmm. himself. Uh, it would hurt Nyx quite well. It would do nothing against uh, Void, and would probably do nothing against Lardar. 
but both void and slardar they do not come online easily they need blinks to uh slardar needs blink to function void needs items to function he will fk jungle for the next 20 minutes right now our only threat in this game is invoker and i guess invoker yeah. either the hood or the blade mill does the job now if your team did win the side lanes i haven't seen you checking the side lanes just to, no. to see how they're doing but in in other games, in high MMR games, if you would be keeping taps on the sidelines, if you would see how they're doing, if they're ahead, behind, you could guesstimate how the next 10 minutes are going to go. And if you would say that my team is doing good, we might be trying to push and take towers, in that case, Blink would make sense because you, your team, would be the initiators and Blink would always make sure you get your ultimate off. Yeah. All right, so to summarize my really, really long sentence, no, it, after it, winning it. middle, which you did, hood or blade mail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just I'm... so you can keep pressuring the side lanes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm not sure what the next one's happened. I'll just there. And I suppose your ultimate could be set for the higher value targets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, so in moments like these where you have taken down the mid lane tower, you ask yourself, where do I want to be next? So what do you think? Where do you want to be next in this game? Mm. I want to be... I'm guessing now helping the side lanes because they're not going too well. And trying to get some more out of towers potentially. Yeah, even with no items, you're still uh, the strongest person by nature, just by being a necro. So your attention should absolutely be on one of the side lanes. Like uh, LC is jungling, so you're not gonna pro you're probably not gonna get much done in the safe lane against Void, especially if you can just queue out your burst. But the your safe lane tower is, looks like a pretty good target. You yeah. and the Lancer could absolutely just team up and shred this tower. Mm -hmm. And in some other games, you might have a safe lane terror blade, which absolutely would not join you because he wants to be farming jungle. And you might have an off lane Mars or, or Sensor, which absolutely would want you to be alongside them. So yeah, each game is dynamic, and in this particular match, I would say the next target does look pretty good on their off lane. And because there's no tower left in mid, would you more or less just ditch the mid or at least not stop trying to push it out if, not... if the mid tower is not in imminent danger you can let a support take this farm mm -hmm. or just or just leave it be yeah you're you're not gaining anything from key from from mm -hmm. continuing to be there i mean the, the rune control is nice but again the support can do that especially mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't have a battle if you don't have a reason to be in the middle yeah but yeah mid mid lane tower being gone does open up some possibilities for you to do more plays. One of which is, if you have a good free roam and contested roam, which you do right now, you could, in this triangle, you could maybe take an observer and block some camps in this triangle. You could, uh, you could smoke with your supports, do the same thing, but now you have backup in case you get engaged. And the support can play sentries to do the same thing, block some camps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, killing the mid tower opens up both yes. good yeah. entrances to their most treasured farming spots mm -hmm. for you yeah. and your team to block it. I mean, it's not a common thing in Loma Mars, so I'm not really expecting you to have this on your mind every every time. But it's well, it's one of the, one of the though. plays you can do. One of the plays yeah. you can do. Yeah, if I'd have just blocked that in, in the camp. 
Not really sure what I was hoping to do with the... So yeah, the, the early game is coming to an end, we're soon entering mid-game. And so far, what I'm seeing is you're spending most of this transitional period in the jungle. Kind of wasting the yeah, advantage. Kind, kind of wasting the advantage, yeah. I'm glad you see it yourself. Yeah, What's worse, think... you're, you're taking farm away from the Lancer. Instead mm -hmm. of making, making space for the Lancer. Instead of making space for your carry, you're taking your carry <laughs> space. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, oh man, I just got so far down a like, bloody rabbit hole with this uh, Radiance. Um, it's, it's not even Radiance, I mean... I guess you not. winning the mid lane like that, is, you could build two blink daggers and you would still have the same impact you could have. <clears throat> yeah. The Radiance does not come into question right now at, at all. Mm -hmm. You jungling comes into question. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Hell. <laughs> you have LC in your team. What you should be doing is just hugging him and get him help him get duels. Help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like instead, of what I'm seeing is you're kind of hoping things you have th things would happen as you show up when you should be the one making things happen because you're the strongest hero on the team. You should be frontlining those towers, forcing the enemy team to jump on you baiting their spells, getting them low enough, free duels, free, free ultimates, you are the catalyst for the place. House, yes, mm -hmm. uh, what, I'm said, what I'm seeing is you're just kind of coming over, huh, is, is things happening? No, okay, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. Also, I, I don't think it'll be worth it to go much past the early and, 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 and mid-game phases because there's a lot of we have talked about and I just wouldn't want you to overload it if it inf with information because I think the information I would tell you would triple if we would add mid-game and late-game yeah. and I, I would like to keep it separate for separate sessions. I, yeah, I'm definitely up for that. I think, um, yeah, I mean, let's not look at that. Um, okay, what was this teleport? <clears throat> Uh, the hope was just defending mid lane, but... I mean, the idea is good. But... Yeah. But, but, well, I, mean, but yeah. I, I would like you to think of every single teleportation as a resource, because once you spend it, the enemy knows that you are stuck mm -hmm. in a particular lane. So... Uh, if you're using a, a teleport, a few... You, you gotta get something out of it. So, yeah. like... It's either a hero kill, a tower kill, a force rotation. Mm -hmm. Your teleport here changes nothing for the invoker. He just he just walks back, and now we're kind of stuck. That's a good point. So yeah. if I'm kind of wasting my teleport there, because like you say, it is a really important resource. If I'm wasting it by TP and mid, should I just let the damage come on nope. the tower? Nope, nope, nope. You let one of the supports... Mm -hmm. To just come and defend. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally, your your lancer should be in the jungle closer to the mid tower, or hell, even in the mid lane because it's free right now. Yeah, I take it back. Lancer should be taken the mid lane, but in case that does not happen, then it's the closest hero to the mid lane, and if there's no one close, then by the process of priority, it's the supports which have uh, teleports available. Mm hmm. Yeah. But yeah, you doing a move like that with no real potential place is it's 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 a wasted resource. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, these last five minutes, kind of looking back on it, it just shows how much I threw away any advantage that I'd gained from the lane. Yeah, yeah. Ideally if any high MMR player would be magically taking control of your hero five minutes ago, those three, those two towers would be way, way gone, way earlier. Yeah. And LC would have like three duels under her belt. 
Now the poor guy has none and has to jungle. Yeah. And the Radiance would never be built. <laughs> Yeah, we're just gonna pinpoint the moment where it all goes downhill and then just stop there. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, again, you're spending time in the lane where no real objective That's can be taken. Idea. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's just no point for you being there. I mean, let's let's look at the map. Okay, so this tower is gone, which is good. This tower still stands. You as Necro. Again, strongest hero on the map. Your job will be to create would be to create space. And how do you how do you create space? Do you pressure the remaining towers? Or you farm the more unsafe areas on the map? Coincidentally, these creep waves right here on the on your off lane is both the tower pressuring wave and the unsafe farm. What do I mean by this? Is that if you show up here the enemy would need to pull like two, three, four heroes and the big ultimate to kill you. Just because of how tank you naturally are without radiance. So if yeah. this happens, if you die, which is entirely possible, if you die, the enemy would still like send a lot of heroes. And just like we have discussed previously, they would use teleports, they would be stuck here. Which would tell your Lancer, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll see to have a little bit more breathing room for those items uh, for the, the the farm so while you're while, while you're up here making space lancer might be finishing his diffusal blade a little bit faster if, if he's going to yeah he is and by once he does finish diffusal he can start joining fights which helps you because now instead of dying you would have Lancer by your side, LC by your side. You would be you will be you would be, would be able to make plays, make those duels happen, turn team fights around. Yeah. So again, to summarize, you the mid laner won your lane, and now you should look for the best next objective or place where you can make space. Your jungle is the last priority you should be. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Hmm. So unless I'm like a is that with any hero? There's got to be some farming mids who enjoy going in the jungle a bit, like Caduce or something. Uh, if if you have picked a farming mid with a farming care, you're just grieving your game. Yeah. Yes, there mm -hmm. are Medusa, Luna, anyone. Any hero can be ran mid, but uh, you need a mid laner. You don't need a second carry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I suppose in lower MMR games, you could get away with it, but you're you're just building bad habits. Yeah. I'd rather I'd rather do things properly, or yeah. you know, learn the more efficient ways to do things. Yeah, you, you build good habits, and in in the long run, it will just click naturally. Yeah, seemed, seemed, seemed a bit early. Yeah, I should have got another <clears throat> right click in. As you can see, right now, the last, the first 10 minutes were all about your uh, little efficiency mm, errors, missed efficiencies as a necro, but the final 10 minutes, they're not your hero related as much as it's as it is your game sense related. Where you should be, where you yeah. should play, what you should do. I think I would say the same things I said if you would be playing Storm. <laughs> which is not the case for the first 10 minutes if you would be playing Storm. Interesting. Um, do you play much Timbersaw by any chance? Come again? Do you play much Timbersaw? Timbersaw? Yeah. No, I'm only familiar with, it, with, its, with its kit. I was just, I'm, I'm basically a Tim Sword spammer, so I was wondering if you play him similar to Storm, to a degree. Mm, nah, Timber would operate way more as a necro, as mm -hmm. by simply knocking down towers. Yeah. Necro, uh, not necro, Timber has a very 
very similar power specs actually to Necro is that as he, it is the strongest hero go going from planning phase to early game to mid game but he falls off pretty really fast once the enemy starts yeah. atomizing against it while Storm it's a constant curve upwards he starts small but damn by the time he reaches yeah, ultra late he game he can just solo kill everyone mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. So, feeding. Yeah, I think that's about pretty much where we can end the session because I, I, had, I don't think anything else of interest <laughs> is going to happen here. The, yeah, the, ta the timings were missed, and that's the biggest yeah. thing. Well, and, and the radiance, but uh, I think the game was last way before radiance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, w I, I wouldn't say last. I would say the. Uh, bum, bum, uh, Look, I don't know how how to how how would I say this? Uh, too much uh, too much downhill things have accumulated. Yeah, into yeah. an uh, unstoppable spiral until okay. the last. Too much, too much momentum. Yeah, yeah, pretty much something like that. All right, do you have any questions about the uh, early game planning phase? Not really. I think um, I think recognizing what you're saying about. Um, I'm playing a necro. I'm not playing a super mobile hero. I shouldn't really be ganking. I can just focus on, like you're saying, uh, making space in the mid, transition into the side lanes if and when mid tower's gone down, um, and basically just continually make space and get objectives because I'm strong early. Yeah. Um, yeah. Makes a lot of sense to me. I think yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good summary. Mm -hmm. That's a good sign. Right. In that case, uh, let's end the session here. Perfect. Well, thanks a lot for your insight. Uh, it's been very helpful.